Mayor of Walnut Creek. We're going to ask you to rise, please. Please stand. And join us in singing and affirming, It's Me, Standing in the Needle. Thank you. Way to go, David Brooks. Good morning, and welcome to Unity. My name is Jennifer Hooker, and this is my maiden voyage as the platform assistant. So I uh, bear with me here with the 930 service, but it's uh, my pleasure to welcome you to the 930 Unity service. We are blessed to have as our musicians today, John and Julia Shin, Bud Eula, David Brooks, and Megan Diamond. And at this time, I'd like to remind everyone to please turn off your electronic devices. Thank you very much. Let's open our service by focusing our intention through our opening affirmation. I will say it once and invite you to repeat it with me twice, and this is also in your bulletin. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Please join me. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. And once again, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Please join me in reading aloud the statement of our unity found inside the front cover of your bulletin board. 
God's love is within each of us, guiding us to dynamically express our wholeness, wisdom, and abundance. We acknowledge the universal wisdom in the Christ teachings and in all spiritual paths. I now choose to open to the presence of divine love and to be changed at death. Throughout this sacred time, God is uplifting me and through my heart, the world. And our heart minister, Jack Schaefer, will now read from the Daily Word. The word for today is world peace. When my attention turns to areas of conflict in the world, I may lose my own sense of peace or feel small and insignificant. Yet I have learned to take a broader perspective. Peace is truly the rule in the world and conflict the exception. Peace abounds as we all work together in cooperation. A new day is dawning in which we know we are children of God, whole and complete. Individually and as nations, we are enough and we have enough. We live in a world of peace and plenty. As the world works together in cooperation, natural resources and abundant goodwill will be available to all. I'm filled with faith and hope for our world. I let there be peace on earth, and I let it begin with me. May mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. That's from Jude 1, 2. The affirmation for today, let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Please join us in singing Weave.
are many ways we support each other here at Unity. I'll highlight a few of those coming up, and others can be found in your bulletin, in our publication center point, and also on the website. Our spiritual learning classes for the winter have started, and all classes are on a drop-in basis. Please consult today's bulletin or our website to choose from our informative and inspirational classes. The prayer experiment, a workshop with Sheila Gatro, will be presented next Sunday, January 31st, at 1800 Oak Park Boulevard. Sheila is the author of Praying Through a Storm. She returns to share with us the scientific formula for using prayer in the laboratory of our everyday life and to have it work for us in the midst of challenges and chaotic circumstances. Sheila will be our guest speaker at all of the services. Unity is helping the Monument Crisis Center provide food for our neighbors in their time of need. The Crisis Center is now serving about 7,000 people per month and their food stores are low. Please bring your food to our Sunday services from now through Sunday, February 7th. And you can also again refer to today's bulletin for the list of food items. And now I would like to ask John Rextro. Come on, John. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, How many John. of you were at our Gala Crab Feed last year? Did you have fun? Yeah. I know, Mary, this is my kitchen assistant. <laughs> well, it happens we have an order in It'll be delivered on February 27th this year, and in fact, two of them got here a little early and decided to join me this morning. This is Cortesi Chiquita. Hey, man, they look really hungry. <laughs> well, everything will be just fine, Cortez, trust me. Trust me, now you sound like my stockbroker. <laughs> oh, so Charlie and his lovely wife have volunteered to be the first two in the pot. Actually, I told them it was a unity of Marin hot tub baptism, so they're looking forward to it. <laughs> but don't get too attached to them when you see them on the table in the back after the services, because they'll be back on your table covered with butter on February 27th. We'll start the evening with wine and raffle baskets, silent auction items, hanging out with good friends. Dinner will be a salad, garlic bread, pasta with my own lovingly made homemade sauce, which, yeah. I, which I fed the board last week and they all still seem to be okay so <laughs> and then of course lots and lots of crap so put us in your daytime or your PDA see Leslie at the back table for more information or tickets and to sign up as a volunteer to help out and we'll see you all in February thank you for your attention yeah. and now I'd like to invite Jeannie Fusen Um, I'm Jeannie Fusen of the Gratitude Team, and what I want you to do is to kind of think, and have you ever come past here when it isn't a Sunday, and this room is empty and dark, and, and seen what it looks like? Well, it isn't a magic wand that transforms it, it's our wand of intention. So what I would like to do today is to thank, to appreciate those people who put it together. So if you have been a part of what, when I say a different activity, I'd like you to stand and say standing through the whole narrative. So the first thing that happens each Sunday, about 7.30 a.m., is a truck doesn't magically appear. It comes from Unity to here filled with specially made carts, specially made equipment that sets up our our sanctuary space. So if you are part of having made the special carts, the stages, all those things in preparation of coming here, would you please stand? Okay. That's Wait, please. I, I want a booming round of applause at the end. So hold your applause till the end, because I want it to be so loud it wakes up the children. Okay. So we're starting with the stage area. All this comes except 
this little thing right here, all this is put up every single Sunday and taken down every single Sunday. And the displays are lovingly made. If you have worked on the stage area, please stand. Then the music people don't magically appear. They work very hard to set up all their equipment, get it ready, and have it in tune and on time for you. So if you've helped with any of the music, please stand. <laughs> um, there yet, not yet. Okay. Then what's hidden right now, but is very important, is our coffee area. So that when you're here, you have hot coffee, hot water, and treats. If you have worked in setting up or taking down our coffee area, please stand. Yay, Seattle. And then our bookstore comes here every Sunday, which is miraculous because look at all it has. If you have helped to set up the book area, the bookstore area, or take it down, would you please stand? <laughs> And right next to the bookstore is our video. And magically, they not only have a video, but they stream our services online. And people are watching right now. So if you have worked with the video and the com online system, would you please stand if you can? <laughs> Thank you. And then out through the doors, in the children's area, people come every week and set up the children's area and bring down, set down the children's area and have it ready for our children. So if you have worked in setting up or taking down the children's area, would you please stand? Thank you. And then we have our welcome table, our prayer table, our displays for events. If you have helped setting up the welcome table, the prayer table, or our special events and the banners, and Jeff made all those amazing hangers, please stand. And so that you're hearing me right now, we have the sound system so that all the music, all the announcers, all the different microphones and chords are all working together so you can hear and hear well. So if you've worked with the sound system, please stand. <laughs> okay. I would like a round of applause that is so, so much shows our appreciation that the children can hear it. So please. <laughs> I want to let you know that this work is a village, is a community. And if you would like to be a part of this wonderful spiritual filled center in setting it up or taking it down, every area needs help. And you can see Charlene and she will guide you to the right place. Um, even 15 minutes of your time could make a big difference. So thank you so much. If you are with us for the first time, would you please raise your hand so we can acknowledge and welcome you. Please keep your hand in the air while our ushers come around and bring you a gift of a shell lay. On that lay is an affirmation that says, just as God has a design for every shell of the sea, so God has a design for your life. Welcome. We would like to send you a special blessing. We rub our hands to focus our energy and affirm together, we love you, we bless you, and we behold the Christ light shining through you. Welcome. welcome. And please take a moment to welcome the people around you.
Take a deep breath and wiggle around in your chair. Get comfortable. Just sit back and let that chair support you as we enter into our time of prayer and meditation together. Gently letting go. And let the music guide you to that center of your heart. your love and blessing flows in and through our lives, and that you know each need we have before we even ask. You are lifting us into your goodness. And 
so we take in place whatever our concerns may be in your loving care. For we know that with you all things are possible. And we know that from your fullness our lives come forth. And that your wholeness lives in our bodies, bringing forth health and vitality in every cell, in every system. We know that your wholeness fills our minds as we go forward with clarity, wisdom, understanding. We know that your harmony exists in our relationships, releasing all that is misunderstood, creating true understanding and harmony in the flow of love and goodness between each of us, between each one that is important to our hearts. We know that you're abundant. You are present, filling this moment. And in your presence, we are in peace. Let it grow. Resting in your peace, we make that choice to follow the direction of the psalmist. We enter into stillness. Be still. Presence we experience as love within our hearts. And using that power of choice, we direct and send your love, for we know that the touch of your love blesses, heals, and uplifts. And as we acknowledge that that, that love flows through our body as radiant life, bringing us health and wholeness, that flows from our hearts out to each of those that are dear to us, creating understanding, harmony, and blessing each. Your love flows from our hearts across this spiritual community, becoming a part of that light and wisdom that flows through each person, blessing everyone in their world. And your love 
flows across the communities in which we live. It flows through our nation, healing its fears and bringing forth its great wisdom and compassion and your love. Sent to all who join us in prayer this day, whether in mosque or synagogue, temple or church, whether gathered at home or on the hillsides, for in seeking to know you, we are all one. And we radiate this love from our hearts, sending it to the earth and to the creatures of the earth. And we send it to the heart of every person. For you are that love in every heart. And in that love, we are one. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world together. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. We celebrate that love with our Lord's Prayer, beginning Mother, Father, God.
Anybody catch the uh, telethon on Friday for the uh, for Haiti? Wonder, wonderful, wonderful experience. One of the things that I'm I, I found myself appreciating is just the tremendous uh, care, love, compassion, generosity uh, that people are are responding to the the need that is there. Um, and uh, when it, we wanted to let you know. If, you're, if you would like to give to Haiti through, the, through Unity Center, we have, uh, our board has created a Haitian Relief Fund. And what we do is the, the money that comes through us, we uh, work with the association, and it goes to uh, the Unity, there, there are many Unity churches in, uh, in the Dominican Republic. There are actually two study groups in, in Haiti. We've heard from uh, one of those. And uh, the, there's a very large unity church in Santo Domingo uh, that is coordinating gifts from all over Latin America. And so we will be joining our gifts to them. And what, what they're doing is they're responding to the need that is being created by the refugees coming north uh, from the major city where, where so much of the relief is, but as, as they really are leaving that area to try and take care of themselves, they're going into an area where there really is, is no support and they're coming with nothing. So uh, through Unity and uh, the Unity uh, in Dominica, the uh, supplies that they needed are, are being uh, assembled and uh, brought in through cooperation with the Santa Domingo uh, military. So that's uh, an opportunity that we have to participate if we would like to, to do that with unity. And what, a, what a gift that we can reach out and help others in time of need. We were, these last weeks, we've been looking at the prosperity principles. What are the, the principles that really align us with this amazing abundance and goodness of God. And certainly, giving is a part of that. Because we were, last week we were talking about that there's this, there's this flow, there's this amazing flow as we attune to that, uh, attune to that goodness that it expands our ability to receive that flow. But uh, part of the understanding it's there is that that flow is not ours. What comes to us isn't ours. It's not our stuff. <laughs> it really is simply that divine care manifesting for us, for our use as it flows on through us. That the, uh, uh, the understanding that we, we are channels to receive, to be blessed by it, but also to bless through it. And that, the, the experience of giving is, is a part of that flow. But we, we start out by, by going to the core spiritual principle that in the omnipresence of God, in this presence of the divine everywhere, that there are many ways that we try to acknowledge and language that. But one, the, the term that Charles Fillmore, Unity's co-founder, used and brought to people during the Great Depression is he invited them to understand our abundance from a spiritual experience rather than a material experience, is that we live in the midst of this divine substance, which uh, in a more common term we, we might, might call like an infinite energy presence, and that we have the capacity as spiritual beings to call that forth into manifestation. The, uh, the, the words that, that Fillmore used was that he said, pour your living words of faith into the omnipresent substance 
and you will be prospered though all the banks in the world close their doors. He's talking about this power that we have as spiritual beings, the awakening so that our creation that we experience here is from the spiritual self uh, instead of simply limited to the third dimensional perception. One of the, one of the things uh, you heard in the announcements that Sheila is going to be with us next week and one of the reasons I asked Sheila to be here next week is that she has one of the greatest skills in using and doing what Fillmore talked about, that form of prayer of calling forth that abundance, that she, she really is excellent in that. She's the one I go to learn to how to do that. So I uh, really wanted uh, to share that with you because it's very, very powerful experience to learn how to align ourselves spiritually and call forth uh, that goodness in, into our world. The two other pieces that we've looked at is one, the need to be aligned with our purpose, that the commitment of the divine is to take us forward that we might unfold and accomplish that purpose for which you came into the world, both the, both the creative purpose and then the purpose of your beingness. And both, are, both are part of this creation that we're involved in. And the, in this flow, the importance of transforming the blocks that we hold to the, in that flow, where we have hurt, we have resentment, we have uh, things that, that bring us into a state of negative emotion towards, towards the world, towards others, that the process of forgiveness is a part of releasing those blocks that that flow might move uh, through us. And many of you uh, joined me last, uh, yesterday, <laughs> wow, <laughs> uh, for uh, working on that, uh, particularly with the, uh, the tool cut through that we were using to uh, transform that, those, uh, that uh, hurt experience and heal it so that we could uh, enter into the forgiveness and move that flow more abundantly. So then we turn, how do we expand it? Okay, as we, as we drop those, part of it becomes that expansion, and giving becomes a part of that. Because it, it's, it moves in and through us, but then it needs to continue moving through us. And because it's not ours, it has purpose. Now, some of that purpose is to provide for different parts of our life. But part of that purpose is also that we might be the instruments in service and in response and channel of that to others. So when you look at the questions like Haiti, one of the questions is, what is mine to give? What, what is the direction that I'm guided? Because you, if you also look out, there is an infinite number of needs, okay? And they're not all yours to address, okay? And what part of that which has come to you is for that? And that asks us to really connect with our spiritual guidance, with that wisdom that says, yes, this is a, this is a wise response from you. This is, this is part, and by rise of funds, I don't mean it's, well, that's comfortable, it doesn't stretch me. That's seldom the message I've gotten from spirit. Okay, but rather, <laughs> this is yours to stretch into, go for it. <laughs> or, this is not yours. You know, step back. This is the opportunity for others to reach and bless and care. Okay, and, and you know, just as we're, we're doing for Haiti, we're also doing for the, the food here for the people in our own community. Again, uh, what is that that is, is yours to do? And as you look at that, you attune to this beautiful flow of goodness. Because God is abundant. We are one with that. And what a joy to empower our lives by let it flow in freely through us. Now, so giving is one of those principles. The other one that expands our relationship to that flow is the principle of tithing. Okay, now, tithing is, is it's one of the, the oldest prosperity teachings that you'll find. Uh, it, it shows up in the, in the Hebrew scriptures over and over again as the, uh, uh, 
uh, Jewish people were uh, told how to create abundance in their world. What was that right relationship with God? And tithing is that giving of the first tenth of that which we receive in acknowledgement of God as our source. And it is a spiritual giving. Okay, so it's, it's given in acknowledgement of God to that place where we are spiritually supported. It is not our secular giving. It is not our social giving. It is a tool of spiritual attunement to expand us and attune us so that that other part might then flow more easily through us. So it's a, it's a very powerful tool, and it's probably one of the most abused by religious organizations. Okay, because there, you know, there's very, there's very strong language on it in the Bible. And some people look at that as maybe a little more literal than I do. <laughs> My understanding is that, first of all, God loves you whether you ever tithe or give a nickel to anything or not. That has nothing to do with that love for you. It has everything to do with your ability to receive and become a part of what that is and align yourself with it. But you are loved because you are, not because of what you do. You are the child of God. And you are loved for that. So we aren't talking here about good, bad, right, wrong, should or shouldn't. That's not part of it. This is a spiritual principle of attunement that you do for your well-being. For the expansion of your awareness. Because what it does is we acknowledge that source through, through that principle we begin to bring the impact of that power into the material part of our lives. Now, if you, if you look at how we attune spiritually, well, we use meditation. I mean, the, the first tool we looked at with Charles Fillmore, uh, understanding the relationship to suddenly, we start with the silence. Start with, it, with meditation into prayer, as we begin to spiritually attune and bring that attunement into the mental and physical parts of ourselves. So prayer in, into affirmation, appreciation, as we enhance and expand the receptivity in the physical, uh, I, I'm sorry, in the emotional and mental part of ourselves. So we expand that, we bring that flow of goodness in there by those of attuning. Now, I don't know about you, but I love being emotionally tuned and uplifted by being in, in intellectually clear and by f sensing that spiritual presence. But it's quite all right with me if that amongst that show up in my material world as well. That's okay. Uh, that's part of what we showed up in. So the attunement into the spiritual or into the physical world comes through the tithing because there i'm bringing that spiritual acknowledgement into the physical world and in that because it is focused on the spiritual it has the power of lifting my awareness we're changing god we aren't manipulating god or making a deal that's a game show. That's now what goes on. What we are doing is opening ourselves by attuning ourselves through this beautiful principle of the tenth, of tithing and acknowledging that in our lives. So, and it's, uh, I, I want to share, share an experience of the tithe with you. And the, and the reason that I, I choose to share this man's experience is because there are a number of pieces in it as, as he, he wrote and shared what had happened in his life that, um, th that let me see some of the things that are very real in our process of uh, attunement to, the, to divine abundance. Uh, that basically what happened is this, uh, this man uh, was at age 50 in his life. And he was looking at his life and basically it didn't work. 
his description of himself was he was a failure. Okay, he held a number of different jobs, and uh, at this, this point, they, they weren't meaningful. He didn't enjoy that. He barely had enough money to care for his family, and they were always behind with the debt building up, and uh, his wife had some significant illness, and so every time they thought they were getting forward, they got, got behind, and it was just, he was looking at an experience where in terms of any sense of success or provision in the world, he felt like a failure. Now, he heard the, uh, you know, some of the, the biblical teachings and, and promises on tithing. And he realized that there was a part of there that it was attractive to him. Now this, there's, the, the attunement is what attracts me, but what attracted him was there is, there is an acknowledgement there that there is a, a part of it that is almost protective. And, and I understand that to be so because what happens through the attunement, we're actually lifted to where our thought and feeling are less caught in the, in, uh, the common perception and energy. So it, it lifts us, and so we tend to not get uh, so much of the loss, the financial loss that we experience in the material world. Not that the, we don't get it at all, but that, that ratio begins to change. And that was very attractive to him because he felt like he was just overwhelmed all the time with what was happening. So he and his wife made the commitment to tithe. Now, says, you know, he, they began doing this and they, they went forward in it and then a situation opened where he got a new job. Now what he says about that job was it was one of the first jobs that he enjoyed. Now when I look at what he says, part of me goes, was it really that good a job? Or did he get changed? You see, what we're doing is we're partnering with that which provides and draws to us that through which we create. And when we, when we begin to attune to that goodness and the gift that's there, instead of the obligation that's there, we begin to open and perceive differently. So this is the first impact you found within, uh, within his work. And what happened over, over a period of time was that instead of this being as the other jobs, it kind of went for a while and finally something happened. Uh, he actually got better at it. And the result was that he was uh, experiencing expanded financial return in it. And then, of course, you hit that place of change. Okay, the, the man that owned the business uh, uh, made his transition. So suddenly here he is, things were going good and now, or, as we've learned to look at it in unity, and now, <laughs> but he, with this change, an opportunity became available to actually buy one of the distributorships that had to do with this particular business. Now, because he was so overwhelmed before, such a thought had never occurred to him. But because he was feeling the support through his tithing, he felt like he could actually step out and take that risk. And taking that risk, he went ahead and did that. And so then, at a point, looking back two years, and, and I mentioned two years because often when we talk about tithing, folks kind of get the sense, well, you know, okay, I did my 10%, now where's the winning lottery ticket? <laughs> and that's not really how it works for most. I won't say it never works that way, but. Uh, and what he realized was that he and his family had moved out of several things. One, they now were able to meet their needs, overcome their debt, and be balanced and healthy financially. The other thing that had happened was that his wife's health began to improve. When we attune to the physical, we attune to the physical. The body's part of the physical. So, and within their family, within the, the uh, dynamics that were there, this flow of goodness begins to touch and change it, lift us 
lift us into a higher perception and experience. Now, his, his sharing with this was about 15 years after he'd started the tithing. And by that time, uh, he had, he had uh, succeeded very well financially and also in terms of his family and what they had been able to accomplish in terms of uh, you know, the education of the children, the, the, the support for each other, the ability to share and enjoy some of the wonderful, wonderful things that are a part of our world and our life. But one of the things he shared that was most interesting to me was the losses that occurred along the way. Because where well, it's the protection aspect of tithing doesn't mean you'll never lose a job or a house or have a financial problem again. What it means is when you meet those challenges which are a part of your consciousness, things that your soul has chosen to embrace for its growth or to work out aspects of yourself that still need to mature. As you meet those experiences, you have a partner in that divine intelligence that guides you through it with grace. If you choose to accept that takes you through. And one of the things I have seen, and I truly believe this from so many experiences of myself and of others, is that as they, as they have used this beautiful tool of attunement, the wisdom, the understanding, the connections within the, the family, the ability to move from challenge and return to flow happens with ease. It happens with wisdom it happens with grace and so again I don't uh, I don't want to share tithing in its simplistic sense because it's a very unfair understanding we still in if we attuned perfectly the what uh, Lao Tzu calls the rise and fall of the 10,000 things the uh, earth, earth uh, experience would not touch us at all. Most of us haven't done perfect attunement real well. <laughs> we, we get some ratio of that. But part of it is that this is a tool of attunement that lifts us and lets it flow through us. Make sense? It's a, it's a as, as someone, I've, I've wanted to, I wanted to acknowledge what it is that I feel in the tithing experience. And um, it's, it's, it's difficult to describe, but it is as though in it there is a world of feeling that has gentleness that has care, that has unqualified support, that has connection, and that those things simply bring the, the abundance, the material is almost the afterthought of it, if you will, uh, because it is the acceptance. I know God is my source. And no matter what, I mean, there's no challenge. But that presence and that power and that goodness is always there. Being a part of this center, you tithe. Uh, because we tithe. A tenth of everything we receive. It's part of our responsibility to model the teachings. Uh, not to say that anyone ever has to do anything. That's not the way we do unity. But that... It's our responsibility, and the, and the board has a deep commitment to model the, the teachings that we teach. And so we, we, we tithe, and, but beyond that, beyond that tenth that we give an acknowledgement of that which supports our spiritual mission, we also give. And both are important. What, uh, what 
Jesus basically, he taught to tithe. He taught about tithing, but he did the fine tuning on it. You look at the, the Pharisees when they were in the experience of, of tithing and um, one of the things that, that he does is he take them for task for the attitude with which they do it. As he was saying, you know, you, you count out everything, so you get your tenth. He says, but you miss the love of God. Because this is about the acknowledgement of this divine love that pours itself into us that wants to care for us. That's where the power is. It's not in the money, it's in the love. It's in that part of us. It says, thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, God. You are my source. You do love and care for me. Thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, God. Together. Thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, God. You have an infinite source that responds out of pure, radiant love for who you are, that would pour every blessing in your life, meet every need, together. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Bless you. And thank you, Reverend David. If you would like prayer support for challenges or celebrations, our heart ministers will be available after the service. You are also invited to place a prayer request in our prayer box by the front door, and we will be praying with you throughout the week. It's time for our prosperity celebration. Please remember, if you are giving a love in action donation, to use the envelopes marked love in action. I invite you to take your tithe or offering in your hand and be aware that God is the source of all our good. Repeat our affirmation with me together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all, all that, that I receive. This is a little song about a needed change in attitude, you might say, called Mr. Know-It-All. I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you should listen to me. Yes, sir, I know what I'm talking about. I even got a PhD. When life don't turn out like I think it should Well, being a know-it-all, they don't do me no good That's when I say, oh Lord, please help me See, thou will be done I say, Lord, have mercy 